Hello and welcome to the Bruce Wagner Show, episode 504. Today I'm going to talk about um, some things that we talked, actually I talked about the other day, and that is launching your own web TV show. This show, in fact, is transitioning from what I'll call format A to format B. Just simply um, creating a web TV show. So format A is the sort of like a casual reality show where I'm explaining to you where I'm at with creating a web TV talk show. And format B is the actual result of that, the show itself. So in the process, there are going to be times where we're doing format A, where I'm explaining where we're at, what's the status with the show, how things are coming along. I'm hoping that this will be beneficial to any of you who want to start your own web TV talk show of some sort. Um, that from my experiences, you can learn, and also I can learn from your feedback. Always get a hold of me at bruce at brucewagner.com or on Twitter as Bruce Wagner, all one word. And uh, I really appreciate your feedback, comments, suggestions, ideas, answers to questions that, I'm, that are challenging me. So today is going to be one of those format A days because we don't have a guest panelist lined up or anything. So let me just review really quickly where what we're at and what we've done so far. This show, the Bruce Wagner Show, is one of three shows, actually, that we're doing. Um, but this particular show has some unique factors about it that I don't think anyone else, as far as I know, is doing uh, all of the above. Okay, so first, the idea is that we're broadcasting it live via sites like Ustream, ustreamtv.com, or no, ustream.tv, that is, and um, also on demand via sites like YouTube, of course, and in full one-hour segments. And we're also doing it on iTunes as a podcast in two forms, a video podcast for those with an iPhone, iPod Touch, iTouch, whatever, uh, any sort of video podcast device, and also as an audio-only version for the uh, for iTunes as an audio-only version of the podcast, which is, by the way, the, if you're not familiar with podcasting, it's really brilliant because it allows your device to automatically receive every new episode without you having to go anywhere and look for it. So as soon as one is uh, broadcast, boom, your device will automatically download it, which is really handy. And if you go to iTunes, in fact, um, you can just do a search for Bruce Wagner and you'll find this show. Uh, in both forms, and you can subscribe to one or both. Um, if you have, uh, like, if you have an audio-only iPod, you can still subscribe to both and watch the video version on your computer, and the audio one will get downloaded to your device automatically. Then the fourth thing that we're doing is very interesting. It's live guests via Skype. And these could be celebrity interviews if they're not available to be here in person in New York City, or um, more often panels, a discussion panel, sort of like The View, but not all ladies and very diverse people from all over the planet live right here on this big screen behind me. So um, with, sw with switching to up to four people via Skype, so that's really, really cool and powerful. You'll see as we get there, when we get to that point, you'll see how... Um, amazingly powerful that is, that format, um, because we've tested it out a bit and it's, it just looks awesome. And then the final thing that makes it really, really unique is doing it daily. We are uh, pursuing a really aggressive broadcasting schedule of doing a show um, up to one hour, like maybe 40 to 60 minute show, definitely under one hour every day, Monday through Saturday, six d days a week. So that's very, very aggressive, and that mean th that plays a role in a lot of factors like zero editing. You have to be able to do things very, very, very quickly uh, when you're doing a schedule that, that that's that tight, when you have a staff of maybe one and a budget of zero, as I say. So those thi six things about this show make it really unique in, and especially challenging, actually, um, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about the Skype situation. Um, as I said, from what I've learned from um, Leo Laporte on the, if you go to iTunes and or Google, either way, and do a search for On Demand Twit, T-W-I-T, that stands for This Week in Tech. But if you look for On Demand, 
um, on your iTunes podcast search, you'll find the raw footage of all of their shows, which is really interesting because that's all the behind-the-scenes stuff. That is much more interesting to me. You can see what's happening before the show, um, in between the breaks, and after the show. That's where I learn the most. So um, anyway, from that, I've learned that they say Skype, and I, th- I believe it's true in my experience as well, Skype works really well if there's nothing else running on that machine, that it's really not as much about the bandwidth as it is about the processing power. So you really need one dedicated computer running nothing but Skype if you want it to be a crystal clear call quality and video and, and without freezing and, and all that. So our intention is to have one computer per Skype caller, uh, up to four computers, and each one having its own unique Skype caller. And we're not going to send video back to that person that we're, we're chatting with. We're, we're going to receive their video but not send it back just to save us bandwidth, if, you know, if that works psychologically. I don't know how that's going to feel for them to not see us and us only see them. But hopefully they'll, they'll agree and it'll work. Um, and then we use this box called a KVM, um, which stands for Keyboard Video Monitor. Or no, Keyboard... Um, what is it? Keyboard Video Mouse. Keyboard Video Mouse, of course. Uh, KVM Switch, which is um, a, a device that lets you switch. You can use one monitor, keyboard, and mouse and switch between up to four PCs. So that's how we do it. This big TV becomes a monitor, and then we have a USB mouse and keyboard that's the console keyboard, and I switch between up to four PCs. So I can have my own PC, which has got this uh, logo on it right now, um, as one of the PCs, and then have three more PCs that have Skype callers on it. And um, technically, I could have a Skype caller on my PC as well, so we can have up to four. All right, and then whoever's speaking, I can switch to that person. So it's going to be really cool once we get there. And I'll tell you what the roadblocks are that I'm facing right now. Maybe you can help me with them, and uh, or uh, someone else can, and we'll all learn together. Um, so anyway, that's the Skype thing. All right. Um, the the issue that I'm dealing with with that is I want to have a discussion panel on various topics. Um, with a different topic category each day of the week. So money is Monday, body is Tuesday, uh, love, dating, relationships, all that is Wednesday, technology is Thursday, uh, celebrity interviews is Friday, and then spirit is Saturday. So I want to arrange panelists, and it, they don't have to be a celebrity or selling anything or whatever, just an ordinary everyday person who has, who's well-spoken and has some interests. You don't have to be an expert in anything except your own opinion. And um, we're looking for people like that to be panelists who can be on, uh, he- on, you know, on the show with us as a discussion panelist, either via Skype, most likely, or if you live in New York, you can even come here in person. I've got one person lined up for that who is great. His name is Daniel Diaz, and he's going to be here Tuesdays, um, let's see, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which is great. And he'll be here in person. But we need people like you um, to join us for these interesting discussions. It's going to be a lot more fun when we, the more people we have. And um, so if you're interested in being a discussion panelist via Skype, all you need is a $29 webcam from, from Best Buy, and you download this free software called Skype, and then you have to resist the temptation to do anything else on your computer during the interview so that <laughs> you're running nothing but Skype and your webcam. We can see you and we can hear you. I, you also need a microphone of some sort, like a plug-in microphone is better. I think it's better to buy a webcam that does not have a microphone built in because you know, it's not natural to put your mouth up to the camera. So it's, I think it's much better to buy a little jack desk, like a standing desk microphone like this um, that plugs in with a jack. They work brilliantly and you don't have anything clipped to you or any wires, and just a webcam. This is a simple $29 webcam that you, uh, you know, whatever. It could be on a stand or clipped to your monitor or whatever. But the cheapest webcam that we tested, we bought all the webcams that they sell at Best Buy. We tested them all with various people without telling them which one was which, and everyone agreed the cheapest one was the best. So that should tell you something. And it was, I think it was $29 on sale. So anyway, just buy a cheap webcam, and it works fantastic. Um, and a standing microphone with a jack. So if you're interested in joining us um, as you know, a discussion panelist on any of these topics, it doesn't have to be all the topics. You might only be interested in technology or you might only be interested in whatever, dating and relationships day or something like that. 
Um, you could you could pick as many or as few of those as you're interested in, and also depending on your schedule. We we tape the show uh, live noon to 1 p.m. starting at 12 noon Eastern time, New York City time. So you can check whatever time zone that is for you. Um, anyway, if you're interested in doing that, get a hold of me. Email me is probably the best, Bruce at BruceWagner.com, or just go to BruceWagner.com and uh, click Contact Me, and you'll have all my contact details there. Okay, so that's where we're at with the Skype thing. I'm really excited about it, and we would actually be doing a Format B real show if I had some panelists on here with Skype. Um, so there's two little roadblocks with that. One is getting people to, to do that. And uh, some people have contacted me. If you've already contacted me, I'll get to you. But um, I haven't had the time to catch up to getting back to them and actually speaking to them and booking it yet. So if you have contacted me, hang in there and I'll get back to you. If you haven't, then go ahead and contact me and we'll be in touch and we'll see if we can schedule you. So that's going to be a lot of fun. The other little thing, too, is I need to buy some more computers. I was looking at uh, PCs online, which, by the way, this is very interesting, I think. Um, let me just jump over to uh, this page. I was just showing a friend of mine. That there's this um, site that explains the different uh, speeds of the different processors in a graph, um, and I bookmarked it because I think it's brilliant. Um, I saved it as CPU benchmarks, but it's actually CPU benchmark.net slash common underscore CPU dot HTML. I'll uh, put that on the on the uh, annotations on the YouTube version. But anyway, probably uh, if you Google passmark CPU mark, you'll find this page as well. But here's this is a, I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is a graph of all the common CPUs on PCs. And you see it goes all the way down t to the slowest and all the way up to the fastest. And this is what I used to demonstrate to people to explain to them that when you're shopping for a PC and you're interested in the speed of the processor, um, the gigahertz is actually the clock speed of that CPU. But it's much, much, much more important what kind of CPU it is than the gigahertz, the clock speed. So a really re it, the gigahertz clock speed is what that is, um, is like the RPMs on a car. So the best analogy is this. You could buy um, a little, <laughs> if there was a, a Yugo three-wheel go-kart that goes at you know, 6,000 RPM, but it only goes 30 miles an hour, you would be looking at the 6,000 RPM like it's 6,000 gigahertz or something, right? Right next to it could be a brand new Ferrari that goes 200 miles an hour, at only 2,000 RPM. So if you look at the RPM, you know, the, the, the Yugo go-kart looks, wow, faster, but it's not. The real speed that you're concerned about is the miles per hour, how fast does it go? And they don't rate those. They don't, I don't know why, I mean, they don't put that in the marketing material. But if you look at this site, you can see the truth. The, the, they call it the pass mark, which is a benchmark that they've done that by running real software on real machines with these CPUs, and it's updated continuously throughout the day. I mean, it's constantly updated with new people running new running this soft same software on many many different machines. So it gives you an average of the speed of those machines. So as you can see, the gigahertz really is irrelevant except when you're comparing two identical processors. Like if they're both Intel Core 2 Duo, e, you know, then you can compare the different gigahertz. Then it's a tiny, tiny, tiny slight difference. So bottom line, pretty much ignore the gigahertz and look at the actual processor. Like the other day, Ed was saying um, he found some deal on this Pentium 4, you know, I don't know, something like, uh, you know, 3 gigahertz or something. And I said, Pentium, see, the problem is the ignore the gigahertz. And look, anything that it has the name Pentium in it doesn't go faster than like this line right here, you know. So the y what you want to look for is what are the fastest processors. The fastest are called Intel Core i7-965 and so on. Intel, cores, Intel Core i7 is the top of the list. And below that, Intel Core 2 quads, those series. And then right below that, AMD Phenom, or however you say that, Phenom, Phenom X4, okay. So you look at that and you remember those names that are at the top of the list, and those are the processor names that you want to look for. 
they're not a numeric thing, they're a name, so you have to remember that. Well, I looked at dealsofamerica.com, which is very cool, by the way. That site is kind of like the Google of bargains, but they only list you know real reputable um, brick-and-mortar stores or, or super reputable online stores. And um, I found that the PC that I bought two months ago, which is down here about the middle of the list, uh, about two months ago for four hundred dollars. <laughs> now I found the dealsofamerica.com lists one that's an AMD Phenom X4. It's nine point six times faster for four forty seven. Okay, did you get that? It's almost ten times faster for forty seven dollars more than I paid a month or two months ago. So anyway, that's very interesting. Um, if you're shopping for a PC, make sure you, you check that out. And I'll put the link right, right here on the YouTube video. Now, just go to breadmedia.com and, um, and look at it. It'll be on the video there as well. So, But the point of this story and how this relates to Skype is that I need to buy more computers. I'm going to need to buy... I'm thinking I need to buy three new towers for so that I can have those four Skype callers based on the assumption that I need one PC per Skype caller, which is what I'm told I do. I know that Skype will only allow one caller at a time for video, so the application is limited, but um, it's not only that. Like e Even though you could you know, trick it with virtual machines and other fancy things on one machine, the, um, the problem is uh, the CPU as well, being able to keep up with it. And I think it would be very complicated if you had you know, four... Skype callers with different microphones. You'd have to configure different microphones and virtual machines and go crazy, complicated, to try and run multiples on one machine. So I think the easiest thing is to buy four cheap boxes. But the ironic thing is these cheap boxes are now among the fastest. They're 10 times faster than two months ago. All right. So that's what we're waiting for at this point is simply um, <laughs> more people to uh, decide to be a panelist. Right now we can have one Skype caller and I do have the KVM switch but I just need to buy a few more machines. I'll probably just buy one and then buy another and another and so on. But eventually I'll, we'll have four all together. Um, then we'll have this uh, Skype panel. It'll get more and more interesting as we go along in other words. Okay, now the um, I want to go through the technical process of how we, we're taping the show. We have um, a camcorder, not a webcam. We're using an actual consumer-grade camcorder. They're $300, maybe maybe $200 by now, but just a, a simple bottom-of-the-line, really, camcorder that has a FireWire out. I think it's called 1344 or something sometimes, but anyway, it's FireWire. You plug a FireWire cable into the output jack on the camcorder, turn it on in camera mode, and you don't even record on the camera. You just have that FireWire coming out, and it streams the video out into your computer. You have to have a FireWire jack on your computer. If you don't have one, you can buy a little FireWire card at any of the computer stores. They're very cheap. And put that. you can have that um, card installed into your PC if you don't ha already have a FireWire input. Then that PC needs to be running Windows, and... Um, then you can run this free software from Adobe called Adobe Flash Media Encoder. That's what we use to stream out to Ustream Live. And it also has the, the most incredible feature that it encodes the video and audio together into Flash, and then into a Flash file, an FLV file, and it saves the file to the local hard drive. At the same time, it's sending that signal out to Ustream. So we can broadcast live and record at the same time with the same software on the same machine, which is brilliant. Um, now you can use this even if you're not using Ustream. That's the cool thing. You could just use the software and not broadcast live on Ustream, and it does the same thing. It'll just save the file. All right. After you have that file, what's really cool is that you can just directly upload that FLV file to YouTube. So as soon as you press stop, you're finished recording your, sh your, your show, um, within mo you can immediately be uploading it to YouTube. So as long as it takes to upload to YouTube, whether it's 10 minutes or you know 40 minutes or whatever, how, depending on the file size, uh, it will immediately be available on YouTube in that format. Now, if you want to do what we're doing, which is broadcasting as podcast on iTunes, it's a little bit trickier, and that involves um, we use a freeware software. It's a free application. It's, you can get it at download.com. If you go to download.com, which is CNET's download site, 
and just do a search for Format Factory. I think it's all one word. Format Factory is the name of the application, and it's free. And what you can do then is there's a under the Video tab, you can select all formats. It converts files from one format to another is the purpose. You can convert all formats to mobile format, and that's the... Um, that's what it's called on the button. And you drag that FLV file into it or just click Add Files. Add the file in. Leave all the settings at the default. Don't change any of those settings. Just leave them at the default. And it will cre create a video file with an MP4 extension, which is um, perfectly compatible for iPhone, iPods, iPod Touch, and all mobile devices that play video. Okay? That's the MP4. Then you do this similarly, you do the same thing right after, actually you can do it in queue, and you can do this right afterwards, and as soon as that's done it'll do the next one. You click on the audio tab, and you convert all formats to MP3, and then drag that file in, and it will create an MP3, which is obviously just stripping off the video and just using the audio only and creating the MP3 file. So the resulting files are from the original FLV, you now have an MP4, which is video, and MP3, which is audio only. And those are the two files that, you wanna use, that you'll that you need to use for your podcast. Okay. Then, there are a few steps involved, like I said. The next step is you take that, um, that those two files and you go over to archive.org. Archive.org is a free public archival, data archival facility, which is wonderful, wonderful thing that they're doing for the world because they're offering this storage space and hosting free. It's brilliant. The only thing is that it has to be something that is uh, Creative Commons licensed. It can't be completely proprietary. So you have to agree to some sort of Creative co co Commons license, which means that you allow people to freely download it. If it's something that is copyrighted and you cannot freely download it, you can't put it up there. But if it's your own created content, you can choose to do that. So you create, you select your own Creative Commons license. And you can have some limits and restrictions on it, but it has to be something that anybody can download. All right, so you go to archive.org, A-R-C-H-I-V-E.org. You create a, an account, one time only. Then you upload that MP4 file. You give it a name you know, whatever, something like your episode number and the name of that episode or something, and you upload that file, okay? And you do the same thing with the MP3 file, so you upload that and you'll, and, you know, upload that MP3 file to the same account. Now, when you upload it, it'll give you a page, it'll give you a link and say, okay, the upload is finished, you click this and there's your page. That page will contain links to the file. It actually converts it into other formats for you too. But you want to find the link for the original format that you uploaded. If it was MP3, then find the, the same MP3 file that you uploaded, the same format. And right click on that link and click and say, um, right click on the link and say uh, copy link location. Okay. And that'll take that link for the file and that, fi that link should end in a .mp4 for the MP4, of course, or .mp3 for the MP3. All right, now you have the link that you need. And that link is going to be the link that's used for your podcast to go out and get it. So whenever somebody listens to it or downloads it for the podcast, it'll be coming from archive.org. All right? The next step is you need to have a blog. We have um, a blog set up on um, a site called Ning, which works really well if we... Um, let me go over to it under my site. See if you, I don't know if you can see this, but it's breadmedia.com. If you go to b r e d media.com, b r e d m e d i a dot com, you'll see our site. And we're using a, a, a web tool called Ning n i n g dot com to host this. So you'll see that when you this is what ours looks like. Uh, if you go to breadmedia.com, you'll see it. If you click on the Bruce Wagner show, you will be taken to the Bruce Wagner show page. And what this is, is actually, this center section is actually a blog. If I click on uh, view all at the end of the blog section, it will take me to the straight to the blog page itself. So this is just a, a typical, you know, internet blog, all right? So that each posting, sh the newest shows up at the top, and then the previous episode, and the previous episode, and the previous episode, and so on. And at the bottom, you see the typical RSS. I don't know if you can see it here, but the, 
the typical, usually it's orange, but they've decided to make it blue. Anyway, you get it. It's a little square with a little, you know, um, like radio, uh, I don't know, curves, little arcs on it, angled. But it's the RSS feed. I'm sure you've, you've seen those little square orange things and wondered what they are. But that's the RSS feed. So you take that RSS feed. That RSS feed is what what will what iTunes uses to broadcast your po- iPod or your podcast. All right. Anyway, you have to have a blog set up for the video version of your show, and if you're going to have an audio only version, you have to have a separate blog set up for the audio only version. So, I don't know if you can see this, but if you again, if you click on um, you know, go to breadmedia.com, click on the Bruce Wagner show, you'll see it. What I've done is um, I've embedded a YouTube player for that episode, which is optional, but I did that so that they can watch it right here as well. But then in the text body for that blog post, the first thing I have is a link that says, download this episode as an MP4 video file now. And that's a link. And of course, that link goes to the archive.org um, actual MP4 link, the link that ends in MP4 that we got for the previous step. Okay, and then I, after that I put, just in plain text, I put parentheses, right-click, then save link as, for people who are not familiar with how to do that, so that they can right-click on that link, and it'll pop up here, and you do save link as, and that will download that video file to your hard drive on your computer, for people who have a, a need to do that. Then, right after that, is another link I created called visit the audio-only mp3 download page. And then I've got the description and show notes about that particular episode. So anyway, when they click the visit the audio only MP3 download page, it's actually taking them to another blog. Okay, it's called the Bruce Wagner Show audio only MP3 download page. And if we go to the blog of that, you see all it is is another blog with a different icon up here. But and it's called the Bruce Wagner Show audio. All right, and it's the same exact thing. But this one is audio only, so it's got the same exact title for the episode, parentheses, audio only, MP3, all right, for each episode. And it's everything else is identical, except the first link now says, download this episode as an audio only MP3 file now. And of course, that link goes to the archive.org version that ends in .mp3, okay? So the same thing, if you want to download this as an MP3, you right click, and save link as, and you're going to be downloading that MP3 file right away to your computer, which is perfect because if you have some other brand of um, MP3 player, you can download the MP3s manually one at a time if you choose to without even subscribing as a podcast. You may have some other use for putting the MP3s on your hard drive or on a netbook or something like that. So you can download the MP3 directly. And then, of course, right after that is the, the link, visit the video player page for full video and downloads and if you click that it takes you right back to the first page that we were on so they just they just reference each other they cl- you know go back and forth but the point is that at the bottom of the video um, blog there's an RSS feed and at the bottom of the audio only blog there's an RSS feed okay those are important that's what's going to drive iTunes you take that um, RSS feed and you go to feedburner F-E-E-D-B-U-R-N-E-R, feedburner.com. And you put that into FeedBurner. They call it burn the feed. And what that does is it allows you to... Feed, what FeedBurner does is it acts as an intermediary and it lets you tweak the feed. And it's very, very, very easy. It sounds complicated, but it's not. You take that RSS feed by right-clicking on it and say copy link location. Go to feedburner.com and say burn this feed and paste that... URL, the feeds URL into it, and then tell it, there's a box that you check, I am a podcaster, yes, check I am a podcaster, and what it will do is it'll automatically bring up the uh, features, this is FeedBurner, it'll automatically bring up this section uh, on the feed under the optimized tab called SmartCast. It says SmartCast, podcasting and iTunes setup. It couldn't be easier, really. You just fill in these these blanks, and that puts in the information that um, iTunes is looking for, specifically for a podcast. Okay, so I've already created a feed for the Bruce Wagner Show (parentheses video), and now I am customizing this feed, the Bruce Wagner Show 
audio. And since I've already filled in all the, for all the forms for the video version, I'm simply going to copy and paste everything from the audio one and make it identical. Uh, the only difference being the title is going to say video instead of audio. So I'll do this while we're talking. You see how fast it is. The first thing, create a podcast enclosure from any links to any rich media file. That's what you want. You just want it set for anything. And then the next one is a check mark. Include iTunes podcasting elements. Yes, of course you want that. And then category. Okay, I put society and culture, technology, TV and film, health and comedy. So, you know, whatever. You can put whatever you want, whatever you think uh, makes the most sense. I really... <laughs> with the topics that we're going to cover, we're going to cover so many topic categories, it's very hard. But I picked five. Okay, so society and culture I did with um, no subcategory. And then you can have up to five, so I'm going to add all five because you never know where people are going to look for this stuff. Category two is technology. And I'm using no subcategory either because they'll find it hi at a higher level, I think, if they're, s if they're just browsing categories. At least that's my theory. Category three, I'm going to call TV and film. No, sub no, sub no subcategory, sorry. Each one of these I'm changing to no subcategory. And then category four, health. I'm going to change that to health. You see what I'm doing? I'm just switching to the one that I've already completed the video one and going back and forth to the other, the audio one to make it the same. Okay, category five, comedy. I don't really know that there's going to be comedy, but we'll see. All right, and then the preview image is a URL to a photo, you know, some sort of a photo uh, that represents your show. So this is a photo of, of my face that I uploaded to uh, to the to the Ning actually to the Ning site the breadmedia.com site. And you can click the preview preview image button, and it will show you what that photo looks like as you can see here. Lovely. All right, and then podcast subtitle I am leaving blank because I believe that the podcast summary shows up. If you leave the podcast subtitle blank, the podcast summary shows up, which I liked better. So I'm pasting in the pre-written podcast summary that I had written for the video when it's identical. There's no, no difference there. And then same thing with the keywords. I'm just going to copy and paste the keywords in there in case people search for those words. Um, podcast author, podcast author email address. Okay, that's my email address. And I'll paste that in. What else is there? Okay, include media RSS information and add podcast to your Yahoo search. I checked that. I'm not really sure what it does, but it sounds good. Okay, then contains explicit content. I said no. Copyright message. I'm going to paste that in. The copyright message I put in is, um, you know, a C in parentheses to represent copyright. Okay, uh, 2009, Bruce Wagner, some rights reserved, comma, C license, colon, and then I put a link to the actual Creative Commons license. It's not critical, but, you know, if you happen to know what I'm talking about, you can go and get that link. It's very simple. Um, it's created actually on archive.org. It gives you that link. You'll see when you upload it to archive.org. Podcast author, I put my name, and then I hit save, and that's it. You're done. Okay. You have actually created all the fields that iTunes needs for a podcast. So, um, let's see. I hit save, and it says you've saved it successfully. Now, the other thing you want to do is go down. Um, on, on still on the optimize tab. You're on SmartCast, but go down to the one that says Title Description Burner, the third one from the bottom. Title slash Description Burner, because that will, if you don't use that, it's going to take the title that is coming from your blog, which is not necessarily the one because that you want, because that one says The Bruce Wagner Show, audio only, latest posts dash breadmedia.com or something. It's like an automated title, whatever came from the original RSS feed, like whatever they decided to put in there. But you can make it, you can actually customize the title to be exactly what you want it to be. And so I copied the one that I have from the video show and I pasted it right into the audio one as well. The only thing I changed was instead of parentheses video, this one says Bruce Wagner show parentheses audio only. And then I've got some more verbiage and garbage and stuff. And I put, actually, what I did here, I'll tell you why. Um, I, the title is Bruce Wagner Show, parentheses audio only, dash, broadcast live from New York daily, Monday through Saturday, 
quote, not just another talk show host who's gay, quote. And that's really weird. <laughs> it sounds like a really weird thing to do. But I'll tell you why. There's a re method to the madness. Um, that title is going to show up on iTunes when they're doing a search or even after they've subscribed. That's the title of your podcast that's going to show up. And really, it's only like that wide. The column is only like that wide. So they're going to see Bruce Wagner Show. I, also, by the way, I dropped the The Bruce Wagner Show, and it just says Bruce Wagner Show because B comes before T in the alphabet. So sometimes they'll sort it by alphabetic order, and I'll be closer to the top. All right, the, but the, here's, the, here's the real reason I did this is because it says Bruce Wagner Show audio only, and that's really all they're going to see. The rest of it is just verbiage that they would have to really widen the whole column to see all that nonsense. But I made the very last word gay. And the reason for that is because some gay people, <laughs> a lot of gay people, um, just for the heck of it, whenever they find a search box, they type in gay just for the heck of it to see what comes up. And there's a huge audience right there. If you're in a special interest group of some sort or whatever, whatever it may be, um, that, you know, that you're a member of that might appeal to a, a vast percentage of the population like that, uh, it's a great thing to do. So tons of gay people all over the world go to iTunes every day and they type in gay just to see what comes up. Well, my show comes up, even though it's not a gay show. You know, I, I happen to be, but it's not a gay show. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just kind of a, a little shout out to those who are. And they might be interested just because I am. I guess it's kind of trivia, but whatever. It's like this is not a gay show any more than Oprah is a black show, per se. You know, it's not. Just something that we happen to be. <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I think that there's a huge audience base in that minority, and so why not? Why not tap into them as well? And, and pretty much nobody else is going to see it either because you'd have to widen the column all the way over here, and you still probably wouldn't see that word at the very end. Sneaky, right? Anyway, so that's what we do. Then, um, that's it. It's done. Now we go back to the My Feeds button on FeedBurner, and you'll see all of your feeds. And the Bruce Wagner Show audio... Uh, is there now and then there's a little RSS button next to that and you can right click copy link and that copy link location that's the link that now is the RSS feed link that you want to give to iTunes okay because this way you can you you know once you give it to iTunes and you set it up you really can't change it inside iTunes I, I think that there's no way to change it as far as I know so the cool thing about another cool thing about FeedBurner, which is also free by the way, is that I can go and change the source. If I get upset at this blog that I'm using, I don't like it, something better comes along, whatever, I can switch to a different blog. I can go in and edit this feed and tell it, okay, from now on, use this input feed and the output feed stays the same. So as far as iTunes knows, my, num my phone number didn't change, you know what I mean? But the original source, can I can change it, I can customize it almost infinitely using this feed burner thing. And it's very, very simple. Um, so that's the story. That's how we do that. Now, if you don't already have a uh, podcast set up with iTunes, that is another one-time thing we have to do. And I, have, I do have um, the video version of the Bruce Wagner show set up as a podcast and we also do Ed does a Spanish language show once a week on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time that's called El Show de Edward Hell his name is Edward Gell and he does this a weekly so we have a podcast set up for that the video version of his show and then we have an audio a little audio podcast just for the fun of it called Bruce and Ed live from New York so we'll putz around with that. That'll just be fun on, a re on an irregular basis. So there's, uh, we really need five podcasts, and we have three. The two that are missing is the audio-only version of the Bruce Wagner Show and the audio-only version of the L Show, the Edward Hell. We're already creating the MP3 files. We've already created, the, we've uploaded them to archive.org. We've um, created the blog. We have the RSS feed. We have the feed in FeedBurner. But now we have to apply to Apple, basically, to the iTunes thing, to create a new podcast. So I thought, we'll see how much time we have left. In the real world, this is how it goes, because I'm going to do this right here with you live. So, um, And it's been a while since I did this, so let me Google um, uh, create podcast. Um, hmm, iTunes. I'm going to Google iTunes create podcast and just see... 
here we go. The first link that comes up under iTunes Create Podcast Search is Apple iTunes, what's on iTunes, um, before you create a podcast. This might be the page on apple.com slash iTunes slash store slash podcast tech podcasts tech spec study HDM. Okay. Anyway, making a podcast. Here we go. Submission and feedback. I'm sorry, submission and, yeah, submission and feedback process. Creating your feed and importance of good metadata, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they've got here creating your feed, which we've already done, and the importance of good metadata. The metadata is all those fields you filled in on FeedBurner, which was done for you automatically once you fill in those feeds, so you don't have to mess with a lot of the technical stuff behind it. Um, understanding the client and store, testing your feed, submitting your podcast to the iTunes store. That's the one you want. So it's under step one, uh, one, two, three, the fourth bullet down. I'm going to click that link. It jumps down to that part of the page. Submitting your podcast to the iTunes store. One, launch iTunes. Two, in the left navigation column under iTunes store, click on the podcasts link to go to the podcast page. In the left column of the podcast page and the learn more box at the bottom, Click on the Submit a Podcast link. Follow the instructions on the Submit a Podcast. That's right. I forgot. It's inside of the iTunes program. So you have to go over to a machine that runs Windows. All of our computers run Ubuntu Linux, except one. So I'm going to go over here to this um, this computer, that uh, the one that's running Flash Media Encoder. Hopefully this won't affect our recording. And I'm going to open up iTunes just did that. Now I'm going to try and uh, click on iTunes Store and follow those steps. It says launch iTunes, number one. Number two, in the, le- in the left navigation column under iTunes Store, click on podcast page. Okay, so I clicked podcasts under iTunes Store. Got it. And then um, in the left column, learn more at the bottom. There's a bottom called learn. I mean, there's a button. Oh yeah, there's a box at the very, very bottom of the page on the left called learn more, and there's a button that says submit a podcast. There it is. That's how we do it. Okay, so it's opening that page, podcast feed URL. Step one. There we have it. I I think if I recall, this is very easy. Okay, now I need the podcast feed URL. Where do I get it? I go back to FeedBurner. So I'm going to have to open up FeedBurner on this computer. Uh, I've got it bookmarked here, FeedBurner. I'm probably going to have to log on because I don't think I've... Uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm already logged on. Okay. So I want to do the Bruce Wagner Show audio. That's the feed I want. So that feed, uh, there's a little gray RSS icon. Easiest way is to right-click that, do copy link location. Okay. Then I'm going to alt-tab back over to the iTunes application where it's asking for the podcast feed URL. I'm going to right-click and paste it in. Did it. And the feed, by the way, it says http colon slash slash feeds2.feedburner.com slash the Bruce Wagner show dash audio. The last part I put, pick the name, but the rest of it is theirs. Uh, but that's what it looks like. That's what a feed URL looks like. I hit continue. Now it wants my password for my iTunes account. I guess you have to have an Apple ID or an Apple uh, account to do that, which you, I guess you do if you have uh, access to the iTunes store. If not, you may have to create an account um, because, I don't know, you might even have to have a credit card to create an account. But anyway, they want you to have an account to create a podcast, but they don't charge you anything. Okay, now I got an error. We experienced a timeout connecting to this feed at this time. Read timed out. Read timed out. Okay. Hmm. So, oh, I click continue again, and it apparently read it the fine the second time. So, the first time it timed out, the sec- I just hit continue again, and it went past it. This is the real world. This is how things happen. All right. Review podcast is step two. The contents of the RSS feed provided displayed below, blah, blah, blah. Artwork, it's got my picture, because remember, I embedded that, that URL to the picture. Uh, name, the Bruce Wagner Show, audio only, blah, 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 blah. Gay is the last word, right? <laughs> Author Bruce Wagner. This short description, the long description, society and culture category, subcategory. Um, hmm, okay, they're, like, it looks like they're forcing me to pick a subcategory. And they, they chose society and culture as the primary category. So it seems like maybe they've changed the way the categorizing is happening, but they're reading the main category, society and culture. Okay, whatever. And it looks like they're forcing me to pick a subcategory, which is set to history. 
which is probably not good. So the only, there's only four choices. History, personal journals, philosophy, or places and travel. I guess personal journals would be the closest to accurate. Language, English, is clean means it's no explicit adult content. All right. Then I click Submit. Bingo. Thank you for submitting this podcast to the iTunes Store. Please note that the podcast that you have requested to add to the iTunes Store will not immediately appear in the store. It may be reviewed before post being posted. Thank you for your submission and your interest in podcasting. We will direct any necessary correspondence to Bruce at BruceWagner.com. And there's a button that says Done, and I'm done. Wow. That was easier than I remembered even. All right. So we've got two minutes left. I'm going to see if I can do this again for the second one. I've, um, I believe I've already got that thing created. The El Show de Edward Hell, that's the Spanish language version, audio only. It's already in FeedBurner. It's there, and it's, yeah, it looks good. So I ought to be able to do this again. I'm just going to, on the same bottom left area, submit a podcast. I have to go back over to my feeds and pick the other one, which is I'll show the Edward Hell audio. And you, you may have to do this twice, too. If you want to have a... I, I'd recommend that you do, but you don't have to. But I recommend you have a video version and an audio version because a lot of people have video players now, and they would they enjoy watching you on video uh, for their you know iPods and iPhones and iP- all, the, all the iPod... Uh, what do you call it? iTouch... <laughs> Is it called iTouch? The iTouch iPod and the iPhones are obviously, they are video iPods. A lot of people have video iPods, so, you know, why not do that, even though it takes up a bit more memory? And then there's still tons and tons of people who only have audio iPods, and you want to appeal to them, too, because if you do video only, they can never um, put your program on their iPod because they only have audio. So I believe it's important to do um, both. All right, so... I just copied the, the feed URL from FeedBurner, not, not the original one, but from FeedBurner. I click Submit a Podcast. I'm pasting it into this podcast feed URL. I'm hitting Continue. Accessing iTunes Store. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, please include iTunes-specific fields. Oh, that's why. Okay, um, it's basically saying that... Please include it as noted below. Oh, all right. So, <laughs> you know, the, error, the, the the reason that this is coming up is because I did not include... I didn't go into that SmartCast. I forgot to go into SmartCast. So I'm going to hit Cancel on this. I'm going to go back over here to SmartCast. Remember how I copied all the fields from one to the other? Well, I forgot to do that for the audio one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the FeedBurner um, feed for El Show the Edward Hell video, and then I'm going to click on the Optimize tab and then the SmartCast. Let's see, where is it? SmartCast. Yeah, SmartCast button. Just so that I have that up on the screen. It should give me all the... Yeah, okay, it's giving me all the data. Now, I'm going to go over to El Show the Edward Hell audio, by putting all those fields into the SmartCast thing, that's the iTunes I, iTunes specific data that it's looking for. So that's why those are not appearing in the feed yet. So now I'm clicking on the audio version of the feed, Optimize tab, SmartCast button, I'm bringing that one up. You understand that I'm, I'm opening up the two side by side simply so I can flip over to one and compare them and make sure that they match. So I do the categories again. Society and culture, technology, TV and film. All right. Society and culture. Uh, and then no subcategory. And then I don't even know if it's using these second and third and fourth categories. It doesn't appear like it is, but whatever. Technology, TV, health, comedy. Let me do that. Technology. Technology, TV, health, comedy. I just picked any that were appropriate, but seem to be the ones people might search on most. Okay, those are the categories. And then the podcast image, okay, this is the same image, now this is, of course is an image of Ed, but I'm copying it from Ed's video version to his um, audio version. Preview the image, sure enough, it's a picture of him. No podcast subtitle, I'm leaving that blank. And then I'm going to change the, let's see, 
or just copy the su podcast summary and paste it in and then the podcast keywords copy that paste it in we'll see how fast we can do this in record time and then his email address ed at edwardgal.com all right content is explicit no copyright message copy paste and then uh, podcast author I'm gonna just put Edward Gell save bingo okay so I put in those relevant fields in the smart cast that should make iTunes happy and then one more thing I'm gonna check is the title description burner th tab under optimized title description burner aha that's not there either so let me go and grab it from the title description burner is important because it it changes the title of that feed that's coming in and the title is what shows up in iTunes in the iTunes store so we want to go to the audio version optimize title feed description title description burner that is and I'm gonna paste it in exactly as it was but I'm gonna change the word video to audio only in parentheses that's the only difference in the title and then I just hit activate I'll leave the description blank because that won't change the description it'll only change the title and then as soon as that's saved boom that's saved okay now I ought to be able to go back over to the iTunes um, uh, iTunes application and do submit a podcast again we're gonna start this bef again because I canceled the, the last one probably still on my clipboard paste yep and there's the feed I hit continue boom now it has populated everything with Ed's picture the title the description everything's perfect subcategory still says history I'm going to change that to personal journals languages ooh languages English and is clean okay I'm going to go ahead and submit it that way but I see that um, I'm going to have to go and change the language. That's a setting. But anyway, thank you for submitting this podcast. Blah, 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 blah. We'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah, it's done. So he's submitted. It's perfect. Now, I want to, I, before I forget, though, I do want to go back over to this audio one and SmartCast, and I'm going to change the language to Spanish because obviously his is in Spanish. And I'll do that for both of his feeds to make sure that I've got the language right. I don't even remember where it asked me that. Hmm. But um, I'll have to check into that. Somewhere it's asking me about the language. Anyway, they've both been submitted. Isn't that cool? <coughs> now, one thing that's really important is you must have at least one episode uploaded to archive.org, posted on the blog, and showing up in your feed because if you don't have at least one episode for them to see or listen to, Apple will not approve your podcast. You have to have, and it can't be just a testing one, two, three. It has to be a real episode. So you have to have an episode sort of as a sample up there before they'll approve your podcast. But ours should be approved probably in a day or so, I'm guessing. So look for it. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me today, and we'll be back same time tomorrow. Take care. Have a good one.